Welcome to these introductions to the chapters in the book Macroeconomics. I am Niels Gottfries and I am the author of the book Macroeconomics. So these presentations will contain 20 to 30 minute introductions to all the 18 chapters in the book Macroeconomics. And they are meant as introductions and overviews of the chapters. They are not complete lectures, but they can be used to prepare for more careful studies of the topics in the chapters before reading or going to the lecture. And they can also be used to repeat the main points of each chapter. So why did I write a new macroeconomics uh, textbook? Well, one main reason was that I wanted to teach macroeconomic in a way that is more consistent, where you have more like one model through the book, rather than a lot of different models, as you often see in, in, in the textbooks. And uh, by deriving the model from microeconomics, the story would be more consistent and also more consistent with what you learn in microeconomics. So that is one of the main ideas. But at the same time as I start from microeconomics, I do not assume perfect competition and that supply equals demand all the time. I wanted to include realistic imperfections and rigidities which characterize the real world and which are absolutely crucial for understanding macroeconomics. This includes imperfect competition in the product market and in the labor market, the existence of unemployment, the existence of wage rigidity, that wages do not immediately adjust to shocks. Without those, you cannot understand macroeconomic fluctuations. A third point was to have a truly international perspective and show data for a lot of countries so that students get the sense of what are the common characteristics of business fluctuations, for example, which are similar in countries and which are where countries differ and not just focus on one economy. And finally, my idea was that building up a systematic theory, we could then use this theory to discuss current topics such as government debt problem, monetary unions, financial markets, financial crisis. In order to study use, using this book, you need a preparation in microeconomics. You need to have taken a course in intermediate microeconomics or at the same time take a course in intermediate microeconomics because we're going to use utility functions, production functions, and those are things you work a lot with in microeconomics. We are going to explain what they are quickly, but I think you need to be used to those concepts to study this course. Also, you need basic mathematics. We're going to use mathematics, but not, not very advanced mathematics. We're going to use functions. We use simple rules of taking derivatives. We're going to use exponents. We're going to use logs. Those things you have to be familiar with. Okay, so the contents, very briefly, uh, the first chapter is an introduction. We talk a bit about what is a macroeconomic model and about the national accounts that give you the basic data of macroeconomics. And then there is a part one, which is the long run, chapters two to seven, where we build up the, ma the macroeconomic model and also analyze the economy in the long run. And this contains chapters on the supply side, production prices, the distribution of income, and the demand side, interest rates, investment, consumption. Then we turn to growth. Why do economies grow? Why are some country, countries richer than others? Then we look at the more in detail at the labor market, wage setting and unemployment. And finally, we introduce money and inflation. And then part two, we go to the short run. We look at 
the demand side, the relation between the interest rate and aggregate demand and production, and then the supply side, the relation between economic activity and inflation in the short run, the Phillips curve. And once we have done that short run analysis, we can look more carefully at monetary and fiscal policy in chapters 10 and 11. And then we open up the economy to trade with the rest of the world. So up to, until uh, chapter 12, we have looked at the closed economy because the open economy introduces a number of additional complications and we want to take things step by step. So in chapter 12, we open up the economy by allowing trade, that is exports and imports, and international borrowing. So you can borrow in international financial markets and you can borrow in different currencies. So we get the interest parity condition. And once we have opened up the economy, we can look at the open economy in the long run first. We start again with the long run equilibrium in the open economy and analyze what determines the current account, for example. And then we go to the short run and look at the role of monetary and fiscal policy in different exchange rate regimes. And uh, after that we have done the theory and then we have uh, four chapters which are more applied. So chapter 15 is about exchange rate systems and monetary union. We use our theory to discuss different exchange rate systems, how they have worked, and how also the experience with the European Monetary Union. And finally, there are three topics chapters. One on business cycles. What is the business cycle? Why do we have business cycles? Are they a problem? A second on institutions and economic policies. So here we kind of take a step back and say, or put it this way, in the earlier part of the book, we take policy as given. We say, if the central bank does this, then this happens. But here we look at the question, what are the incentives for the policymakers? What are the institutions that govern policy? And what are good institutions for policy? So here we will discuss why many countries have made their central banks more independent compared to a situation, say, 30, 40 years ago. And also rules for fiscal policy. Uh, finally, we look in more detail at the financial markets and the role of banks. And also we analyze why financial crises occur some of the time. Okay, so macro is complicated and you need to work really hard, especially in the beginning of the book. There are some heavy theoretical chapters that you have to work through, but that investment in theory is really paying off towards the end of the book when you can use the theory to study a number of real world problems. So good luck with your studies of the book, Macroeconomics.